How's it going everyone? Welcome to Rad's Nottingham Forest in the transfer window. Let's discuss it, shall we? Plenty of rumours going on this last week. No confirmed deals in so far, but it's only a matter of time before we do see some players coming through the door at the City Gram. So let's discuss it, shall we? If you do enjoy this video, hit the like button, subscribe to Rad's if you're new. Plenty of stuff on the way this week. Two vlogs as well as this video, maybe even something else. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, let's get into it. So before we actually talk about transfers in general, let's talk about someone leaving the club that is a major part about how we do transfers. Dane Murphy has left Nottingham Forest by mutual consent. He has been apparently likely to leave for about a month, according to the Telegraph. However, I have my doubts that it's only a month. In my opinion, it's probably since the Leicester game. Since the Leicester game, when Cooper was potentially going to get sacked, we were potentially going to fire a load of the recruitment team, Dame Murphy being one of them, we did fire some of the recruitment team. But obviously Dame and Cooper obviously stayed put. But according to other reports and rumours that I've seen, maybe the reason why Murphy has not stayed at the club now is because he did not back Cooper in the most crucial of moments after that Leicester match. And we've seen since Cooper signed that new deal that we have seen progress, quite drastic progress compared to what we were seeing before. It's sad because from a transfer point of view, I think it's a huge loss and we do need to replace him. However, I understand why he's left if we didn't back Cooper or why he's been made to leave because yeah, I, d I just think he should have backed Cooper when he needed to. But I don't know the details. It could be nonsense, that, that, that rumour. But what we do know is he's left the club by mutual consent. So thank you very much, Dame, for everything you've done for us. You're a huge part about how we sign players in the promotion year in particular. So cheers for that. And I wish you all the best, whatever you do now. So I think it's only right that I show you the squad depth map. Only that it hasn't actually been updated besides... The addition of Josh Bowler joining Blackpool on loan makes a lot more sense. I mentioned it last week, of course, it's now been confirmed. The loan to Olympiacos didn't work really at all. It's probably a big learning experience for him, but it obviously didn't really make any sense anyway. Blackpool will appreciate him. He knows the setup. It's English football. I think he'll do a lot better for them. But I think it's important to look at the squad again and every week anyway, because after that absolutely horrific Blackpool game in the FA Cup which I did do a review too so if you want to go and watch that there's a link to it up here but ultimately it was a chance for all the players in black essentially besides well Scarpa is in black actually but still he was a first teamer basically all of those players to prove their worth and none of them did maybe besides Harry Toffolo I think he did all right and obviously Scarpa we're not going to count him I think he was more than good enough Everyone else vastly underperformed and failed to live up to expectations and live up to the opportunity to prove their worth. But it didn't work in the slightest. Even players that I still had belief in, in Surridge and O'Brien, were pretty horrific. Uh, Nico was dreadful. He's been exposed at times this season in the league, but against Blackpool, probably one of the worst games I've seen from Nico. So I'm not saying we need to bin them all off, but... It's concerning that we see them put in that performance, albeit one game doesn't define their whole footballing ability. We have seen good stuff from all of those players, but I think it is quite telling. It was an opportunity for them and they didn't take it, all of them. And Dennis, again, refused to pass a football in a football match. So I just think we ought to mention that because we're looking at the squad. Does that change what we're going to do in this window? Does it mean we're going to bring in more players than we wanted to? Maybe. Speaking of Emmanuel Dennis, I mentioned this rumour last week. There's been a slight adjustment to what might happen. He could be heading back to Watford in a swap deal for his Mila Saar. I would much, much prefer to have his Mila Saar at Forest than Dennis. I don't have any doubts that Dennis is talented, but he is very, very frustrating and he quite clearly isn't the right fit. Now, he can play up front, whereas Saar can't naturally play up front. But I prefer Saar because, from what I know, he does pass the ball. I don't know. I haven't watched him in a huge amount of detail. But whenever I have seen him, he's been a very impressive player. The two times he's been in the top flight with Watford, Watford have been a shambles. And he's been one of their few bright sparks. So I wouldn't mind having Saar at all. Lewis O'Brien currently being linked with a move to West Brom to link up with his old manager at Huddersfield, Carlos 
Corbraham makes a lot of sense for both parties. O'Brien, O'Brien, O'Brien is heavily struggling at the moment, well out of favour. Something's quite clearly gone wrong with him, um, which is very sad. He's a player that I heavily rated at the start of the season. I still think he's good, but he did not help himself in the slightest in that black ball game, basically giving away the first goal, heading it into the danger zone. Like, come on, that was shocking. Um, West Brom, you know, they're on a high at the moment under Corbahan. It would probably make sense. A club that do have a lot of quality in the championship, so I think O'Brien would be an outstanding signing for them. He's a brilliant player, and I just think there's quite clearly been something that's gone wrong for him. Hopefully, we do see him again in a Forest shirt, and this loan benefits him. We'll continue with the rumours out. Jack Colback and Harry Toffolo being linked with Wigan. I understand Colback being linked with Wigan because ultimately he's 33, he needs to be playing football. You know, he's not got much longer left in his career probably, so he needs to be playing football and he's probably, a, I'd say he's a hero, modern day legend, if I'm completely honest as far as, is that a bit steep? I don't know. I'm not at all saying that he's on the level of some of the actual legends of Forest, but still, I'm just saying, I think he's a player that we can um, thank a huge amount for what they've done for the club. So it would be sad to see him leave, but he quite clearly hasn't got a future, he's not good enough anymore, and Wigan would be a perfect fit, to be honest. But I do think Toffolo, that is a huge disrespect if he was to go to Wigan. He's way better than Wigan. He was in a side that narrowly missed out on promotion last year to the Premier League with with Huddersfield and he was excellent and Wigan could be getting relegated to League One so I feel that that's I mean it's a fantastic signing for them but I think he's way better than Wigan in my opinion and if Toffolo's leaving then that definitely means we're going to sign a left back doesn't it Sam Surridge obviously a player I've raved about a lot since he's been at Forest but his performance against Blackpool didn't do him any favours in the slightest he's obviously being linked with the move. Burnley and Sunderland or one of those clubs he could be going to but apparently according to reports Surridge wants to stay at Forest and fight for his place which fair play to him you know I hope he does I hope he does prove everyone wrong but after that Blackpool game I have my doubts even about Sam if I'm honest there's also another rumour out this last week in Atif Kanata he could be going out on loan to one of a number of clubs Stoke and Bristol City being linked with him League One interest apparently, Odis, I'm probably saying that slightly wrong, a Danish club is being linked to as well, 21 years of age, attacking midfielder, 5 goals in 6 games to Forest under 21s, made one single appearance last season in the league against Barnsley as a substitute, I remember him coming on and I think he hit the post actually, I seem to remember him doing something in that game in the short time he was on the pitch and he played in both cup games actually as well in the League Cup for a full 90 minutes. So he's played in the first team a handful of times but he does need a loan. He needs to express himself and play regular football above under 21 level. So that's outgoings. Um, obviously I mentioned one incoming potentially as Marla Sar coming into the club but we've already mentioned him. So another incoming possibly would be Mason Holgate from Everton. Um, I'm not too inspired, if I'm entirely honest. 26-year-old um, centre-back, played four times this season in the league, two of them being full 90 minutes, one of them against Forest, actually. However, since then he got a knee injury, kept him out for a while, but since then he's been fit enough to play, but he has not played once. He's played in the FA Cup against Man United the other day, but that was his first appearance since... August I believe so yeah he's well out of favour at Everton and he certainly uh, doesn't inspire me if he can't get into Everton's defence which having watched their game against Brighton is a shambles then why on earth would he improve our defence you know what I mean Cookie's not good enough anymore um, McKenna's being questioned now I think Wolves fine I think Bolly's proven his worth and obviously Nick Carter is great but we need another centre back and Mason Holgate, for me, is no better than any of those three. Or even McKenna, quite frankly. If he comes in and he does well, fair play to him. But he's not, for me, in my opinion. Another player being linked with is John Tolkien from the Nottinghamshire Post. This rumour, New York Red Bulls, 20 years of age, a left-back. And as I mentioned, we could be getting rid of Toffolo. 
So if we were to sign a left back, it would make sense. Um, 66 appearances and he's only 20 years of age. That's pretty amazing. He only made his senior debut for New York Red Bulls at 18. Salzburg and RB Leipzig being linked with the 20 year old. Is that really a shot when they're both Red Bull clubs as well? Probably not. And obviously Forrest are linked with him too. He signed a four year deal though for New York Red Bulls in October, so it'd probably take quite a bit to get him. Uh, I have no idea whether he's any good or not, but based off those stats, at just 20 years of age, that's pretty impressive. There's two of the rumors in for Forest so far. Hossam Alwa, a rumor that was obviously quite heavily been publicized in the summer, but obviously it didn't end up happening. 24 year old midfielder can also play as an attacking midfielder potentially 5 million euros is all it would take to prize away someone that has been linked with big clubs in the past i seem to remember him being linked with man united before or someone big like that and now he's going to be joining an even bigger club in nottingham forest like i don't blame him for turning down man united it would make sense if o'brien is going to be loaned out with Qate's quite lengthy injury and obviously Colbert probably not being good enough. You've only really got Yatesy, Froiler and Mangala and then you kind of fill on the ground if you get rid of the other three. So we probably do need a midfielder when you look at it like that. Last week I was saying we didn't need a midfielder but having assessed the evidence we probably do. However, if we sign Awa, then that makes our midfield options pretty incredible. Um, the fact that he can play further forward as well I'd be very interested in this one. He did get an injury at the start of the season for two months, which kept him out. But since he's come back, he's been playing regular football for Leon. And one final rumour in the last week has been Ben Burton Diaz possibly making a return to the city ground. 23 years of age, a striker, of course. Right winger, Blackburn. Obviously, we know about him. I did a video essay about him in 2021, in which... Basically, the whole of the population of Chile seems to have watched that video, so please go and check it out. Um, yeah, it was good fun doing that one, and I do intend on doing more video essays going forward, so stay tuned for those. Obviously, he struggled when he first joined Blackburn, but his Copa America situation obviously quite heavily changed the trajectory of his career. It propelled him to a whole new level, and I am very surprised that he's still at Blackburn. Nine goals, four assists for Blackburn as they're currently third in the championship this season. I wouldn't mind it, it'd be quite poetic if he came back, but I can't help but feel we could do better. We could be aiming higher. But what do you think about all these rumors, everyone? Do you think any of these are worth it? Are you not sure about some of them? Are you not interested in some of them? Let me know. I'll be doing this every week, and it's always good fun to do it, and you all seem to enjoy it. So. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you very soon, come on you Reds, there's plenty of stuff coming up this week so stay tuned for that, thank you for watching.